Hello everyone and welcome to another scripting tutorial. So first off, um, over the next couple episodes I will be teaching you how to make automatic um, lights that turn they, that turn off or that turn off during the day and they turn on during the night when it's dark. Um, we won't like I said it's going to take a couple episodes but um, here we go. The first thing I'm going to teach you about is a certain type of for loop. Um, actually, yeah, for the, for this episode, what we're going to do is just to make these turn on and off. Um, just like, they'll basically blink on and off. Daytime doesn't matter for now, but that is what they're going to do today. So, let's... Let's... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach a little bit backwards, but hopefully this will make sense. So, obviously... Uh, you might think we'll be needing a while loop to do this. If they're going to constantly be doing something, we're going to need a while loop. So while true, do. And it's going to do this. Let's see. Wait to. So they'll blink. Well, let's, uh, let's actually do 0 0.5. So they'll blink every half a second. Um, and, okay, well, let me show you how I have these set up right now. I have a lights model. And so these two things are grouped together. I have a script inside them. Actually, let's let's delete that one that I was just in. I have a script inside the slides model so that this script will control. Don't mind this. This script will control the the lights from for turning on and off. And in each light, there's a bulb. You know they have. Oops. They have the the bulb that actually has the point light in them. In case you don't know, um, to make, to actually use dynamic lighting and make, you know, things shine, you ba you basically put point lights or spotlights inside a part, and it makes them, makes them turn on. So, that is uh, all you need to know for that. And, okay, let's get started. So, while true, do, let's just put in what we had before, wait 0 0.5. And if you watched last episode, you should understand what um, a while loop does. So, uh, okay, well, what do we need to do? We want to turn on... Okay, well, if the light's already on, then turn it off. And if the lights are off, then turn the lights back on. And there's a kind of a weird way that um, to do that which I'm going to show you, <clears throat> but let's let's just code this out. Um, for i, v, in pairs, and this is the new uh, for loop that I'm showing you today, which I will explain. Uh, don't worry about it. So script dot parent get children, and that basically gets all of the children, or all of the instances inside the instance that you give it. Do Like I said, I'll explain that some more. Okay, and we're going to have, um, okay, so V, um, if V is not, or let's, let's see, actually, let's just do this. V dot bulb dot point light, oops, light dot enabled equals not V dot bulb dot point light dot enabled. What does this even do? Um, well, let's just run this code. This this will actually not work um, because it says bulb is not a valid member of script. Actually, I, I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, okay, well, basically what this for loop does is it goes through each of the... Look in the Explorer window right here. It goes through each of the children of the of our lights model that we have here, and that is um, that's what the script does. And I'll explain this some more. Don't worry about it. Um, it is like not. It doesn't look English for i comma v in pairs. It when I was first learning what this did, it didn't make sense to me, and it still doesn't make sense to me why why it's in pairs I don't even know what that means but um, 
it works. And this is just one of those things that just it doesn't matter. You don't need to translate this into English. It's it it, it just works. Just trust me. So inside the uh, the pairs with the parentheses here. Actually, let me let me delete this for you. It looks something like this. Um, that is how you start this for loop for i comma v. And these can be these can be anything by the way. They can be Bob and George. But um, I don't feel like typing out a whole word, so we're gonna do i and v in pairs, and then you give it a table. Um, segueing onto the table, I will show you what, what a table is in a minute. You give it a table of items and it will do, it will run code for each of the items in the table that you give it. If you don't know what a table is, like I said, I'm going to explain it in a minute. Um, and actually, let's explain what it is right now. So, don't mind this code, we're not working on this right now. This is just some things here. Okay. What a table is, it's basically a collection of of items, of values. So if we say, for example, fruit equals uh, apple, oops, apple, uh, mango, of course, and banana. For each of those, or let's see, this is, this is a table. And, let, let, okay, well, let's comment this out real quick. <coughs> And let's print fruits uh, two. Um, and I'll explain this in a second, some more. Uh, just um, trust me on what's going to happen. So if we run the script, it prints mango down in the output bar. Down here it says mango. Now, why does it do that? Uh, I'm going to explain. <clears throat> Notice that this uh, mango is, of course, in the it's basically the second item in our little um, array of items here. And if we if we type the name of the table that we give it and then square brackets and a number, it will print out the or it will not print it will basically give you the um, the number of the item in the table. I hope that makes sense. And what you might be wondering is why why this is useful? <clears throat> uh, it has a lot of different uses, um, and you'll 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 come across uses for for these tables this way in, in the future when you script on your own. But for now, it's useful in that saying uh, "get children." It gives you "get children" gives you a table of something. So if we said um, game dot workspace get children it gives you a table of everything in the workspace so it would give us just a big table of this and it wouldn't give us a table of the things inside the things in the workspace but um, if if what I just said didn't make sense then uh, never mind you'll figure it out in the future some some of the things you get or some of the things I explained in this episode you may not get right off the bat. Um, just all that you need to know is um, is that this will work. Uh, if you get this to work, then good job. Okay, so, and it doesn't look like a table that I just showed you, but you can't really see it, but this does give you a table of everything in the workspace. That's what Get Children does. And here we only want the children of the lights in here look in the explorer window again we only want to get all of the lights in our lights model and um, you know just so that we can turn them on and off so we say okay for IV in pairs scripts dot parent the parent is the lights model colon uh, remember not to use a dot get children because that doesn't work it's a colon, get children, do. Okay, so this looks kind of messy, probably, um, but uh, th I've pretty much explained all I can on how to write this and sort of what it does. So um, if, it, if, you, if it still doesn't make sense, just keep practicing, and you'll get the hang of it. 
Um, okay, uh, the I, I actually never explained this. If we said print, or okay, l let's do it this way. Um, let's say print v.name. Make it kind of simple right now. Okay, and if we run the script, cool. So every half a second in the output, it's printing out all of the um, all of the names of each of the children inside the uh, in here. Let's actually just let's make this a little more readable. All right. So now this is just going to do it once. and run. Okay, so look, it says it prints out light, light, and script. Um, and as you can see, inside this lights model, we have script and light and light. So, uh, yeah, that hopefully explains some more about what it does. Now, what if... Let's reset this again. What if we printed I? What does I do? And then let's print v.name. What if we did that? Okay, it prints out a number. So i is equal to the position of the item in the table. So um, you may not have to use this very often. You may never have to use uh, that i in the code. Um, but it is useful sometimes, and you, uh, in your scripting endeavors, will figure out when to use i. It's kind of nice to know the position of the items in the table sometimes. So, and, and let's make this, uh, I want to explain one more thing to you. It doesn't have to be i and v. Like I said before, it can be like blob and cheese. Just make sure that you change these, uh, these things in the code to match what you just changed it there. So if we did blob and cheese, then if we run it, scroll down, it still works. Awesome. Um, but I and V are commonly used because I stands for index and V stands for value. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, then uh, it doesn't matter. All you need to know is what they are. Okay, so. Um, as long as, okay, so we want to turn on and off the lights inside the inside the bulbs and since the script doesn't have a bulb inside it it's you know it's it's only a script um, we want to make sure that uh, v is not equal to so if v is is not equal to scripts then awesome so this will prevent the code from breaking and it will let the code do its thing so it's going to say v dot bulb dot point light equals and as as, a, as you saw me code before what does this not do you may have seen this in um in in like f um the if statements and okay let's 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 do an example here so if not v is equal to, oops v is equal to script so this will you know it's not if 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 you know english then um, then you're still probably watching this video, which means you probably know what the word not means. It reverses the value that comes after. So if not v is equal to script, um, I don't know, I'm kind of at a dead end here, but right now we'll just use a little curly thing, and you can check if something is not equal to another thing by using the little curly and then an equal to an equal sign. So v dot bulb dot point light equals not v dot um or oops dot enabled my bad dot enabled equals not v dot bulb dot point light dot enabled. So it looks it's kind of weird. It's basically saying okay, make it so it's um, equal to the opposite of what it is right now, and that is what will happen. Um, 
So yeah, now this, this code should work. If we run it, awesome, these are blinking on and off, and everything is working just fine. So these will continue to do this forever and ever, and the, like I could have scripted it so that um, I could have made it easy, well sort of easy in a way, by you know having each light have its own script to make it turn on and off, but that could potentially cause some lag and make them go out of sync. So instead, I'm just controlling everything from a single script, um, and each light inside this lights model will work. So if we want to add more lights, oops, we can just um, copy one and put it in, and now this light will work as well if we run it. Awesome, they turn on and off. Okay, so let me go over the code one more time. Basically, it we have our whole loop that that runs every half a second. And each time the loop runs, it goes, okay, for i, v, in pairs, it does a little for i, v, in pairs loop. Uh, it goes through each of the scripts, parents, children, which will contain all the lights. Make sure it's not equal to a script so that it doesn't break the code. And then it's saying, okay, v.bulb.pointlight.enabled equals not v.bulb.pointlight.enabled. And that's pretty much all there is to explain. Um, if you like this episode, uh, be sure to leave a like. And stay tuned for next time when I will be talking about um, how to make these automatically turn on uh, at nighttime and turn off during the day. So yeah, I will see you later. Thanks for watching again. Goodbye.